Hi guys, I'm Lucero and today I want to talk to you about some INFJ stereotypes that I've seen perpetuated a lot on the internet um, and just kind of in general with the MBTI communities. Some of these I think are genuine like misunderstandings of the INFJ type and others are misinterpretations of MBTI and the way that it's most efficiently used. Either way, I kind of want to talk about them a little and debunk those. The first stereotype about INFJs is that we are really, really nice, sweet people. This is definitely just kind of a misunderstanding of how MBTI should work, um, mostly because each type has an ability to have negative and positive traits and that depends on the individual person and not necessarily on their type. I would argue personally that an unhealthy version of any type is more likely to be negative and exhibit negative behaviors whereas healthy versions of every type also have the potential to be really really kind and sweet and caring and other positive uh, have other positive traits. So to say that INFJs are explicitly nice is kind of an invalid thing to me because you shouldn't generalize a whole type as being good or bad. Maybe to you certain things about INFJs or any other type is positive or negative and that's perfectly fine but I just don't think I can subscribe to the idea that a whole type, a whole set of people can be explicitly good or bad. The second stereotype that gets on my nerves a little bit is that um, INFJs are super mystical uh, beings and I think a lot of this comes from a combination of a misunderstanding of how introverted intuition works as well as um, combining that with our tendency to be very people-oriented. Introverted intuition just kind of grabs information from the world around us and reaches conclusions based on those um, details and it's not always going to happen in a way that's super explicit but it does happen and because we're very people-oriented um, INFJs we do tend to be able to draw very accurate conclusions about people um, when we meet them and after knowing them for just short, a short time. So in theory, I think we would make great fake psychics and great like palm readers and things like that. But to say that it's magical or mystical in nature, I don't think that's 100% valid. Um, the best way that I can describe it for those who are unfamiliar with how introverted intuition works is think of a crazy dream that you had, like a nighttime dream. You know, it was really detailed and a lot happened and you're just kind of at a loss for how your brain concocted such a weird tale. That's the conclusion. That's the introverted intuition conclusion. It's just this wild thing that's kind of crazy and kind of out there and you're not really sure how it arrived there. However, if you look closely at that dream, you can start to kind of work backwards and understand where each part came from. You know, if you had a dream that you were in France rowing a boat and you ran into the Hulk, you know, if you recently had a movie binge involving Ratatouille, the Titanic, and the Incredible Hulk, then that makes sense, you know? That's where all those parts came from. And similarly with introverted intuition, you just have to take a closer look and look at the details and see kind of how everything puts together. And it's kind of working backwards um, in order to understand somebody else's introverted intuition, but it's possible. It's possible to understand how those conclusions were made. And just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that it's magic, basically. <laughs> now the final misconception that I see a lot about INFJs, and particularly those who identify as INFJs, not necessarily observers, um, is that we are these super rare, special, 
unicorn special snowflake type people it's a combination of various different things one of which is we have to remember that mbti is a soft science or soft part of psychology it's really more of a pop psych thing and i recognize that and i fully accept that it doesn't stop me from completely running with mbti and having my fun with it but i do recognize that it's hard to test uh, it was basically just made up by people that can be really tricky to survey and to identify and to test so yes infjs are as it stands the rarest type but that could definitely be from a number of factors, you know, improper testing, difficult, uh, difficulty with typing people. You know, if you don't have a good MBTI practitioner, you're going to end up with a bunch of really weird skewed results. Um, another thing is INFJs are naturally tuned to kind of fit our environment. And so if we're not taking the test by ourselves in an environment where we feel safe to be ourselves, we're actually probably going to likely test as whoever we're surrounded by so that's another thing is that we just we there might actually be so many infjs like there might just actually be everywhere but they might be mistyped and another thing that i just plain don't like about this whole infjs are so rare and you know catch them while you can kind of thing is it's a very arbitrary feature and i find that people who um, really latch onto this idea of being super unique probably aren't even INFJs and I say that very cautiously <laughs> very cautiously me you know realizing that one it kind of made sense I was like okay well I could see why I have difficulty sometimes feeling like I can open up to people because there aren't very many people who have my specific set of traits you know and it did make me a little bit sad and I was like okay well I guess this is just kind of how it is. What I didn't feel was a sense of superiority or a sense of uniqueness or a sense of otherness from other people. And I didn't feel like I was this super divinely special individual. And I find that a type that would most likely mistype as an INFJ or INFPs because that's such a facet of introverted feeling is wanting to feel like an individual and wanting to be unique and wanting to feel special in a, in a way. And so if that is something that you're very attracted to, the idea of being, you know, one in a million and super rare and hard to find, it's probably an INFP. I mean, because INFJs so much value a sense of connectedness and belonging that the fact that we're super rare is kind of annoying, actually. Um, if that's even true, like as I said, testing could just be wrong and I could actually know a bunch of INFJs who have just presented themselves as different types with different traits. Overall. If it's true that we are the rarest, it's not something that makes us happy. I hope that was helpful, or at least interesting and not a complete waste of your time. <laughs> um, I just really love MBTI and I find it really fascinating and I really love how it helps me understand other people and myself a little bit better. So I really hope to make more MBTI videos in the future. But until then, I will get going and I'll see you soon. Bye.